Hello Architects and welcome back to another RPG Architect tutorial. My name is Bert and today we're going to simplify things a little bit. We're going to go over some, uh, some functions that uh, most RPGs, a lot of games have in general. And that's just going to be treasure chests and doors. Yeah, believe it or not, almost a year later and I'm finally covering this. Way to, way to go me. Um, I've been doing a lot of complicated topics recently, it feels like, at least to me. So I figured, you know, let's just do something something easy. As you can see, I've converted my map. Um, uh, the, I've been using the 3D one. I've converted it over to 2D, and that's why you have the buildings here. And I've already got a door made. We're going to go into this in a bit. But uh, anyway, let me stop rambling. Let's just get on into it. Let's create ourselves a treasure chest. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to add new entity. We are going to first and foremost, I'm going to add a sprite. So click the little dots next to your sprite model. Um, I've already imported these into my content folder. I got the uh, treasure chest from the new 2D sample that just dropped. Uh, so you might already know, we just need to set our directions and frame count down to one. I'm going to set this to 16 based on this graphic. I just want this closed treasure chest, okay? I'm going to select OK. Um, actually, you know what I need to do? I'm going to name this script. We're going to name this Closed. I'm going to name the entity even. I never do that. That's probably a good practice, right? Just naming entities. Treasure chest. Closed. And before I go any further, I'm actually just going to copy and paste this one. Oops. Actually, I gotta do a new one. new script first. Copy and paste this script. Reason I'm doing that is because I just want to be able to do this. Let's go back to our graphic. Rather than resetting my directions and my frame width and height, I'm just gonna select the open one. Bam, we're gonna rename it. Open. And yeah, so let's go back to our closed script. Um, really pretty easy stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna fix the direction on this one. What do we want it to do? We just want it to give us some money. So let's first and foremost, let's say, let's display a static message. Let's use the victory message one because that's just kind of a tiny little window. Uh, let's just say you done got 500 G. Yep, you done got 500 G because of course all right, so that's what it will display when we open up the chest. Then we need it to actually do that. So we're going to come to inventory, change money. We're going to set the value to 500. And really, it's just that simple. Well, it's not just that simple, but I mean, this will this will give us 500 gold. And then what I want it to do is we're going to go to data manipulation. We're going to change switch. I'm going to use a global switch. Oh, and look at this, I already made it. I'm going to use chest one. Uh, use whatever global switch, you know, you can assign it to any value as, as usual, but I got one called chest one. We're going to set that to be on. And then on our open script over here, the one we copied and paste, pasted it, um, we're just going to set the condition that this one is when global switch chest one is on so this will be the default it'll be uh, closed and then as soon as chest one is triggered it'll switch over to this but if you may you may have noticed uh, we have these two other frames of animation that we haven't really touched on so the way you get those to play in between is we'll put it here first um, you're going to go to Entity and Vehicle, Entities, Move Entity. And if you've never done this, this is how you can get animations, uh, some basic animations with entities. So I'm going to set this to self. We're going to go to these little dots here. Let's open in my other window, so let's drag it over. And here, we have a bunch of different elements we can do. So if we have a, a character we're wanting to move in a cutscene, we could do it here or just have them turn and face each other if you wanted to animate things, blah, blah, blah. But we want this one here, change sprite model. So I'm gonna select that. Down here, we are going to re-select 
our chest. Set this back to one and one. Set this to 16 and 16. And we're gonna select this second chest. Okay, then I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it. And on the second one, I'm gonna choose this third chest. I'm gonna do it one more time. And I'm gonna choose this fourth chest. And the reason being is because I want it to play through this full animation. It's gonna play through the full animation, then it's gonna trigger the rest of the events. So I don't want it to stop here and say you got 500 gold, you, you hit okay, and then it pops over this open one. So play through your full, full animation. And I want it to kind of go smooth, so we're gonna use this wait. Uh, and we're gonna just put little time delays in between. I think, I don't know, 150 might be good. Might be good, I'm not sure, I didn't check that. Uh, so yeah, we have it play through, that's good. And if you want it to play first and then trigger the message, trigger your changing inventory and whatnot, it, uh, you'd select wait to complete. I don't think I need to do that. We're gonna hit, leave that off. Um, oh, and you know what else? Actually, let's go back in here. While we're at it, let's play a sound effect. So first thing we're gonna have it do, we're gonna play a sound effect. Here, popped in there, let me drag it to the top. And let's just do, uh, da, 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 da. let's do open, per perfect, open one. Do that one, hit okay. Uh, I think that's everything, so let's hit okay. Let's set our position right there. And look at that, the chest is a little small because it was for a different resolution, but uh, let's uh, hit a, the action button on it. You done got 500G, and then it stays like that. Oh, and look at that, it'll keep playing. So, what I need to do is if we need to add the condition here. So, if global switch chest one is off, then it plays this. But as soon as it's on, then we're gonna be, we're gonna be here. So that'll turn that first script off. I knew that. I don't know why I forgot to do that. Open it up, and then we can't, I'm hitting the button, can't open it again, okay? The reason I did a global switch is because if I did a local, um, then when I would leave, if I would leave the map and come back, this would be reset. So if, if in case you're wondering, that's that's what that was about. Um, but yeah, so that's how you set up a basic chest. Now you may be wondering, what's this red door here? What's, what's red door? Uh, well, it's essentially this uh, very similar process, but what I have, um, well, here, let me just show you first, and then I'll go over the script with you. How about that? How about that? We'll do it a little differently this time. So I'll go to this door. It's locked. What do I do? I can't get in. Well, there's a switch in this little barrel here. So if I check this barrel, you found a switch in barrel? Question mark. There's a little sound effect. The door opens. There's a little animation, and then I can walk inside, and we find this naked man in his house just minding his business and we bust in and then I can walk on this grass patch and I'm back outside so what did I do how did I do that let's just take a look so um, I guess let's start with the door first thing we have the script dormus closeus closeus uh, there's no condition and it just shows the message it's locked okay I got a graphic it's fixed. Well, it's not fixed, but um, so that's where we start, right? I got a couple other scripts, but let's check the barrel now. If you check the barrel, the first one is just called locked. Again, there's no conditions. This is just the default. It displays the message. Found a switch in barrel. Plays the sound effect. And instead of a global switch, I used a global variable. So I set a global variable to one. And the reason I did this rather than a switch 
is because, okay, so we set it to one, then over here on the unlock script, if global variable is set to one, we display a message, you already flipped the switch, bro. And so this would be where the, the puzzles left off. So let's go back to our door. Let's check the second one, door must open them. Global variable door puzzle equals one. Play sound effect, open. Here's the move entity again, just like we did with the treasure chest. It uh, changes the sprite. Wait a second, or 250 milliseconds changes the sprite. Wait 250 milliseconds, then it is open. And then change global variable door puzzle sets it to two. And if it's set to two, then it goes to this script up here, condition global variable door puzzle set to two. And if player and entity touch, it teleports us to this map, new house. Oops, I, I, mit, I clicked off this position, but that's, that's where we will be t teleported to. You can define wherever you want it to teleport to just by clicking here and you can set the layer as well. So if, if you have a map where you're on like the top floor or whatever, you can select the layer, da 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 da. You get it? Got it? Good. So the reason why I did a global variable rather than a switch is because say you had this door, you needed to hit two switches to open it up or you needed to hit four, step on four tiles to open it. If you have a more extensive puzzle, you know, more than one step, then you could use global variables just to notch up the whatever variable is the condition until the player gets it and finishes the puzzle. That makes sense. So anyway, that will do it for this video. I know I did it a little bit different this time by having things set up ahead of time, but I mean, I think by showing you with the treasure chest uh, and then just kind of going over the door, I think you guys get the point of what I was showing you here. Let me know if you want me to do more entity videos like this, where I just go over different script commands um, rather than some full on database deep dives or whatever. Just let me know what you guys want to see next. I'll, I'll do my best to get to them. Um, as always, thank you for watching. Thank you for comments. Um, be sure to like and subscribe. Join the Discord. If you don't have your copy of RPG Architect already, be sure to grab it. There's a link in the pinned comment below. And as always, you guys have been amazing. I have been Bert. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Sure.